Hi, I'm Karen Rowan. My husband Paul and I have been breeding Dalmatians for well, about 27 years. Um, we first fell in love with the breed when we were little kids. Uh, I grew up with a family that had a couple Alaskan Malamutes and a little rescue beagle. And I always loved dogs and wherever we traveled, it seemed I always found a stray and tried to sneak them home. And it used to drive my poor mother crazy. And back then we had World Book Encyclopedias not the internet, and my favorite section was about the dogs, and I remember reading about all the different breeds of dogs, and the Dalmatian just was one that always stood out. So, with knowing how my mom wasn't an animal lover, I knew whoever I was going to date or marry had to definitely be on the same page as me, so that was actually one of my first questions I asked someone when they asked me out, do you like dogs? Because you must love dogs. <laughs> And it was um, about a week my husband and I were dating and we discovered that we both loved Dalmatians. So I knew he was the one and that was the breed. So we dated for a few years and then we got married and um, I researched so much about dogs because we lived in an apartment and back then you couldn't have dogs in apartments and we were saving to buy our first house and when we got our first house we were gonna get our first Dalmatian. And the movie was very popular and I knew there were a lot of backyard breeders and a lot of puppy mill breeders breeding dogs that didn't have great temperament. So I learned about the show breeders. And so we got our first dog from um, a, a show breeder up in Michigan and oh, he was absolutely beautiful. But we did every mistake. We spoiled him rotten. <laughs> he got his way. I made every mistake in the book. So we learned firsthand of what you should do and what you shouldn't do and how important crate training is. And so when we got our second dog, I got it from a friend of the breeder we got it from because um, we had moved down to North Carolina and she lived in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And we wanted a show quality dog, but weren't really interested in us showing. But then I went to a few shows with her, um, helped out in the ring, and I fell in love with it. And so, you know, the third dog we got, which was our foundation bitch, we started showing and finished her and we bred her. And then a few years later, Paul went into the ring and he's just a natural handler. He, he does such a beautiful job presenting the dogs. And we had our first litter in 1997 and we waited a few years, had the, the next one in 2000 and we had one in 2004. And the way old breeders used to name them, they'd start with the letter A, B, C. So we kind of took on that tradition. So okay. we're on the, we just had the I litter. These two are from the I litter. And, um, uh, it's 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 a really beautiful, fun addition to our family, loving these guys and nurturing and training them. And we do it a little different. I keep the puppies till they're 12 weeks old um, because all the animal behavior studies and books and things that I've educated myself on, it shows that when puppies are kept with their litter mates till 12 weeks or more, the dogs learn dog language. They learn how to have conflict resolution. They know how to properly play. They know when one is upset and how to pull back. And it, 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 the importance of that, you're going to have a dog for 15 years. And if it's not social, if it doesn't like other dogs, if it doesn't know how to resolve things, you have a problem for 15 years. So by us keeping them for 12 weeks, which is a lot more work on our end, we're giving the families a great addition to their house. Um, I teach them how to sit. They know what high five mm -hmm. they know how to lay down um, I teach them the foundation of stay which is called wait because a puppy can only do that for about two three seconds uh, we teach them leave it they need a hundred people in the first hundred days of life of life so they're meeting big people short people heavier people little kids um, they're meeting them all and then a few of my friends who I've know very well and I'm very comfortable with their dogs. I invite in the different breeds. We have a, a Beagle come, a Black Lab come, a Golden Retriever, Old English Sheepdog, and I have Great Dane. So these guys have met other breeds of dogs and they don't look at them and they don't go, oh my gosh, what are you? And they're scared. They're saying, oh my gosh, you're a friend. So they become very dog social as well. Of course, our first bitch was a beautiful dog. She had, a, there's a standard for every breed. And there, the standard doesn't state what, it states what a perfect dog is, but in existence, there, nobody's perfect. But you're trying to measure as close to that because we're trying to create
the next generation better than the first generation. So we're always thinking ahead. We're not thinking of what we're going to get, you know, or what we have right now, but we want to breed quality. Um, in how we know that now with all the genetic testing and, and x-rays and OFA, when a dog or a bitch, being a female, is two years old, they go in for a health check. And so we have their hips are x-rayed and then they're sent off, those films are sent off to OFA or pen hip and they're certified. Um, I do both registrations because OFA gives you a, a good, a fair, good, excellent range where pen hip gives you an exact degree. So it gives you a little bit more precise of a, of a measurement. We also x-ray their, their elbows to make sure they don't have elbow dysplasia. Mm -hmm. um, Dalmatians can have thyroid issues, so we, we check for a normal thyroid, so we only want to breed normal thyroid. Um, we do an eye test, it's called SURF, so we're looking for genetic defects in the eyes. And of course, when they're babies, they're bare hearing tested. So we have all the puppies bare hearing tested at, at six weeks. We drive out to Raleigh to Dr. Beth Bauer, and she does their, their hearing tests. You can have a Dalmatian that is bilateral hearing. You can have them completely deaf or they can be deaf in one ear. Deaf in one ear is called unilateral. So we are looking to breed bilateral hearing dogs. And by doing so, we've had a very good success rate of our hearing staff. Well, Dalm Dalmatians are an ancient breed. Um, we, we really can't trace back to where the original Dalmatian came from. Uh, there are scenes in some frescoes that uh, of depicted of Dalmatians running alongside horse-drawn carriages. Wow. And they're called Dalmatia because it's believed they come from the region of Dalmatia off the coast of Croatia, today's Croatia. And it's believed that the gypsies had traveled through Europe with them with their horse-covered wagons. And it's there's stories that have been told where the Dalmatians are entertaining the crowds while some folks went around pickpocketing other people. Um, but when they made it to England, the aristocrats were very impressed with the spotted dogs, which they called plum pudding dogs. And um, so the Dalmatian became part of the coaches with the aristocrats. And so they've run alongside the horse and wagon. They're, they're natural coaching dogs. So they are long distance runners. They have a lot of energy. Um, you channel that energy into exercise. They make a great couch potato dog because they had their little morning play session. George Washington imported them to the United States and bred them. So that's the trace mm -hmm. coming to America. He brought in 17 breeding stocks and, and, um, he bred them from there. And then, you know, they, they are known for the fire trucks because back in the day, fire departments were horse-drawn wagons. The Dalmatian's job was to keep the rodent population down inside the stables. And when the horse-drawn wagons were called out to duty for an alarm, the dogs ran alongside or out in front, warning, you know, barking and warning people that the, the fire trucks were coming. 